Okay, students, let's continue. Now uh, I'm going to give you different kinds of curves and we are going to uh, classify them saying smooth uh, or not smooth. Suppose you are having a certain curve parameterized by this uh, parameterizing vector r of t equals sine ti plus cos tj plus 8k. Now the question is, is this uh, curve made by this vector smooth or not? So before you do this, what you need to remember is uh, the case where a certain curve is said to be smooth. So if you remember very well, I told you that uh, if the derivative of the parameterizing vector of a curve, you see, uh, with respect to t, comes to be different from zero for whatever t value within the given interval, and if the derivative is continuous, uh, the curve is said to be smooth, you know. So you will never face any sort of sharp corner uh, on the curve. So let's now check whether this can make zero or not. So let's now derivate this one. So clearly the derivative of r with respect to t makes this one, cos ti minus sine tj plus 8k. So clearly you can understand that for any sort of t value you may substitute here. You see you are unable to obtain the entire expression for this r derivative at t to be zero. So this shows you that this is uh, this uh, particular curve made by this parameterizing vector r of t is a smooth curve, a smooth curve, okay? Because the derivative is continuous for one thing, and uh, the derivative is not c is not zero, whatever t you may substitute there. Look what what has been written here. You see uh, here is 8k. So uh, by default results any sort of you know worry about the components of i and j as long as this one is non zero one you see our derivative at t can't be zero vector and our derivative at t is always different from zero for one thing and so and also it's continuous therefore you see this curve made by this parameterizing vector is uh, a smooth curve so proceeding to the next one that is uh, question number 40 14 it says identify whether the curve again uh, being parameterized by this vector is smooth or not so what we need to do as i said earlier is we need to carry out the derivative of this one and check whether uh, there is a possibility of getting uh, this derivative to be zero so when you carry out the derivative of this one look this is going to uh, be obtained because this is t squared minus t, you can multiply t for each of these two. Then the derivative of t squared is 2t, and t minus 1, and the derivative of minus t is minus 1. Coming to this, uh, sine pi t, the derivative is uh, cos pi t times uh, pi, as you see right we are. And here, the derivative of minus ln t is negative 1 over t, and for 2t, it will be 2. So you are having the derivative function to be like this. Now you need to think of the case where t can be 0. I mean, our derivative at t can be zero. So clearly, our derivative at t is continuous at every number except zero. But what will happen if I take 0 0.5 students in place of t? If I take 0 0.5 in place of t, uh, clearly our derivative at 0 0.5 is continuous. Clearly, it's continuous because we can have a definite, uh, you know, vector for that particular t value. And uh, our derivative at 0 0.5 or 1 over 2 is 0, students. Let you see. If you put 1 over 2 here, students, so 2 times 1 over 2 makes 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Put 1 over 2 here, it's going to be cosine of 90. And cosine of 90 degrees is 0. 0 times pi is 0. And again, put 1 over 2 here. 2 minus 1 over 1 over 2 is going to be 2 minus 2, 0. So now we got uh, a case where this is not continuous at what student? Uh, this is not smooth at uh, t equals 0 0.5. Therefore, this is not a smooth curve, students. This is not a smooth curve. Now proceeding to the next one, we are, we are having uh, another question, and that is question number 15. We are asked to find the unit tangent, unit normal, and the unit binormal vectors for you see a curve parameterized by this particular uh, parameterizing vector. So your R of t is ti plus 3 sine tj plus cos 3 cos tk. So uh, we're now going to look for those three uh, vectors. So the first is, the first task that we need to do is we have to look for the derivative students. Because the unit tangent is made from this one, so our derivative at t should be obtained 
and clearly if r of t is ti is a derivative of this is b one i and if r of t uh, if r of t is having y components three sin t j three sin t so the derivative will be three cos t and the derivative of three cos t is minus three sin t so what comes next is the normal because this is required here the norm or the magnitude of these r derivative at t is the square root of students the sum of the square of the components here we are having one so we need to take one square this is three cos t so three cos t squared nine cos squared t this is minus three sine t so its square will be nine sine squared t so nine can be taken out then you are left with cos square and sine square which actually is one so one times nine is nine plus one makes ten so radical ten is going to come right so the magnitude is radical 10 this the unit tangent vector as we know is determined by this one so everything is available now our derivative at is known and that is the norm of our derivative at is also given so it's a matter of now taking these obtained values in their places so i plus 3 cos tj minus 3 sin tk radical 10 can come so this basically is a tangent vector at any what t value so on the curve which has been made by the parameterizing vector r of t for any t value on the curve you can have, you can know okay the tangent the tangent vector by substituting the given t uh, here in our tangent vector so simplifying this uh, we can have this one the radical 10 is a common denominator so we can make it for each component and can have this uh, sort of expression and next from that uh, we have a unit normal vector so this vector is supposed to be uh, orthogonal to the tangent vector the one we obtained here so it's determined by t derivative at t divided by the norm of the derivative so uh, t derivative at t is nothing but it is this is the derivative of the one obtained here we know that the tangent vector is already calculated here so let's uh, take the derivative of this one this basically is a constant one, so it will be zero. So we don't have any uh, x component. That's why we are not having here x component, a component. Coming to this, the derivative of cos t is minus sine t. So this minus comes out and minus three radical 10 sine tj can follow. The derivative of sine t is cos t, so minus three over radical 10 cos tk can come. Now the t derivative at t, so we need to determine this magnitude because the norm requires that, okay? So the norm of this derivative will be like this. It's the sum of the square of these components, right? The sum of the square of these components, as you see, 9 over 10 cos square t plus 9 over 10 sine square t can come. So students, uh, we know that 9 over 10 is a common one, so we can take it out and then cos square plus sine square makes 1. So finally, radical 9 is 3, and we are left with radical 10, so the norm is going to be 3 over radical 10. Thus, everything is now available, so the normal vector is the, the, the uh, ratio of these two expressions, so the two are already obtained, here they are, so we directly put them as you see, and finally, this is going to be uh, the normal vector, you see, it's a matter of dividing this one by 3 radical 10, so we can avoid these two, minus sine tj can come, and we can avoid these two, minus cos tk can come. So this basically is uh, basically is a normal vector which is orthogonal to the given tangent vector. Where was that? Here it is, students. So if you carry out dot product between the tangent vector and the normal vector, you will obtain that to be zero, students. This is how you can verify whether the exact the obtained answer is uh, right or not. So proceeding to the next one, we have a unit binomial uh, vector. So a binomial vector, as you know, is uh, a vector which is actually is a cross product of you see the these two vectors tangent and normal vectors since these two vectors are unit vectors uh, the binomial vector is also a unit vector so we have to carry out the cross product between these two and we knew that uh, our t of t or the unit tangent vector is given by uh, this one we obtain this one so we directly put the i j k components as you see there uh, and the normal vector is also obtained as can be shown we're not having the x components so that's why i'm having zero there then minus sine t minus cos t can come now we need to find out the cross product of these two so this cross product can make this one as you remember from your uh, previous mathematics class 
the gross product of this can be obtained so just assigning plus minus plus here so when you discard you know when you just uh, discard the first column in the first row you are left with uh, the product of these two so as you see 3 cos t times minus cos t it will be minus 3 cos square t and then uh, you are having radical 10 so that will come as it is and again here you need to take the product of these two taking minus into account so 3 sine square t radical 10 can follow so uh, you are having this so do this uh, one by one and finally you will come across with uh, this kind of output so the binomial vector is going to be uh, this one therefore you see simplifying this adding those like terms together uh, we uh, can obtain the final output like this so this is the binomial vector which is actually orthogonal to both uh, the tangent vector and normal vector and this can easily be verified by just carrying the dot product between uh, the binomial uh, and uh, either a tangential or the normal vector because uh, since the binomial is tangent to uh, these two uh, the dot product must make zero okay that is to say b dot uh, t or b dot n should give you zero